Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in this one I'm going to be showing you the best Chi Yu build for Razor in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. This is the last of the four legendary Pokemon of Ribbon, and we're going to need to collect eight stakes in order to get this Pokemon, so let's start off with the first one. So they're all going to be in the top right corner of the map, and the first one is going to be right here, so I'm going to fly over to Montenegro and then make my way over. So once you've dropped off that uh, snowy mountain right there, you'll land on some grass and it will be behind this rock right here. We'll be collecting the eight blue stakes this time. When you collect each stake, it will disappear from the ground. That's how you know you've got it. The next stake is going to be right around here. So we're going to put a waypoint and make our way over from the North Province Area 1. And it's going to be on top of this little grassy area right here. So the third one, you're going to put a waypoint around here. And we're going to fly over East Province Area 3 and then make our way over. So you'll have to climb this little wall right here. And when you get to the top, you'll see it right next to the tree. Next up is going to be the fourth one. What you want to do is you want to put a waypoint right here. And then we're going to be flying over from the Clasado Gym. Look at the pretty weather. So it's going to be the first patch of grass as soon as you leave the snowy mountain in the middle of two trees, as you can see right there. And that's where our fourth one's going to be. So we're halfway down. Now we can move on to the fifth stake, which is going to be right here. So you want to put a waypoint there and then you want to fly over to Levinci and North. So you'll just need to keep climbing until you get to the top of there next to a tree. Once you're here, you should see it right here. And that will be your fifth stake. Onto the sixth stake, you're going to want to put a waypoint at these ruins right here. And you can just make your way over from where you are right now. Or you can fly over to North Province Area 2 and make your way over there. I'm going to fly over to North Province Area 2. And then once you get here, it will be at the back in the ruins. And you can just collect that. Now the seventh stake, we're going to be flying back over to North Province Area 2. And it will be right here. So we're going to fly over there right now. And then you just want to climb this wall right here. And when you get to the top, there will be a tree. You just want to climb the little wall that's in front of it and collect that blue stake. Okay, so that's seven down. One more to go. And we're going to be putting a waypoint right here on the map. And we're going to make our way over. And once you get to the very top top there should be like a little patch of grass right here let me show you where i am on the map so right here and you can just collect your last blue stake and then you'll be able to catch your legendary pokemon what you want to do from here is you can just jump down right here and when you're in the water there will be a cave you just want to keep going through the cave until you find some land and there will be a shrine right in front of the land i would recommend saving before you actually encounter this pokemon and then you just want to touch the shrine and the mighty fish will come out of the shrine and you can battle it now keep in mind that your special defense will be reduced by 25% when you enter this battle and then you can just catch it. Now I'm going to switch over to my actual Scarlet account to do this Chi Yu because that's where all my builds are so I'll see you in a sec. Now that we've got our Chi Yu, we've got its level 100, we need a fire terror type. Now I'm going to go change my terror type to fire right now. Change your terror type, all you need to do is head over to Medali East. Once you're over here, all you have to do is head into this restaurant right here. Once you're in here, we're going to be going to the top and speaking to the person with the yellowy orange text. Then I'm just going to click Eyebrow Fire Terror Shard. You're going to need 50 of them. Then I'm going to click my Chi Yu and change its Terror Type to Fire. Now, there's two things you can do here. It won't change the build too much. It's just that one build is going to be like all out attack, and the second build is going to be a survivability. So the first one is just using the item Metronome. It's a chain item, and every time you attack, say you're at 100%, if you attack again with the same move on the second turn, it will go to 120%, then 140, and so on until 200%. And the second item will be for survivability. It's going to be the Shell Bell. Now, all damage you deal to your opponent, you will gain 12.5% of that damage back in health. Now, the reason that we've gone an alternative route and said you can do Shell Bell is because Chi Yu actually only has a base HP of 55, which is extremely low. So if you're having trouble and you're fainting a lot, then switch to Shell Bell. I'm, personally, I'm going to use a Shell Bell just because I like survivability over just raw damage in most cases. You get both of these items from the same shop. I'm going to show you where to get them both right now. So if you head over to Lavincia North, once you're here, we're going to be heading over this direction to the Deli Bird Shop. Once you're inside, click Battle Items, and then you can buy the Shell Bell and the Metronome both next to each other. Metronome's 15,000 and the Shell Bell's 20,000. Now, once you get out of the Deli Bird Shop, what I want you to do is just turn right and there will be another shop it's black and green the chansey supply shop just go in there 
And this is where we're going to get all of our mints to change our nature. We're going to be running the Modest Mint on our Chi Yu. If you don't already have a Modest Nature on your Chi Yu or a Modest Mint, you need to buy one of these. It will increase our special attack and decrease our attack because we're not going to be using attack at all. As you can see there, up and special attack, down and attack. Now our EVs are going to go into special attack and HP. And you want to make sure you have max IVs on everything except attack. If you don't know where to get max IVs, you can just come to any deli bird shop once you're inside click on general goods and then you can buy the bottle caps what they do is you can exchange one of those for one max iv but when you catch your chi yu i think it comes with three max ivs guaranteed because it's a legendary pokemon let me show you how to check your ivs currently so if you go in your main menu and then click boxes see all my stats on the right if you click the plus button on your controller it will go to your ivs now as you can see i got three best ivs which was hp attack and speed and then i had to hyper train special attack special defense and defense so once you've got your two or three bottle caps whichever ones you need what you're going to do is you want to fly over to montenevra once you're in Montenevra, we're going to be coming over here and speaking to this person right here. He will hyper train your Pokemon. Now, I'm going to have to pick a different Pokemon because my Pokemon has six max IVs and it won't let me get to the next menu. So I picked a Pokemon and now I'm going to click on Bottle Caps. You want to click your Chi Yu, then Bottle Caps. And then you're going to be clicking HP, Defense, Special Attack, Special Defense and Speed. Leave Attack. We don't need Attack. It'll just be a waste of money. We don't use it. Now we're going to go over our ability. Basically, our ability is called Beat of Ruin. It's a really good ability. Whenever we get into the battle, it lowers our target special defense by 25%. So from the start of the fight, we're already going to do more damage. Now our attacks are going to be Flamethrower, Dark Pulse, Snarl, and Nasty Plot. Flamethrower is going to be our main attacking move. It's a fire type move. It's going to do a lot of damage. It may burn the opposition. This is very good for physical attackers if they do get burnt. Dark Pulse is just for coverage. It's going to be our alternative move and it can make the target flinch. Snarl is going to be a move we will use at the start of the fight if we're against a special attacker. Chi Yu specializes in special attackers. It has 120 special defense and with the move Snarl as well, they're not going to be doing any damage to us after that, even if our health is just 55. Now, Nasty Plot is going to be our fourth move. What this does is it boosts our special attack by two stages every time we use it. Very good move, powers up a lot. Now, Nasty Plot and Dark Pulse, we can learn through level up. You don't need to worry about those. But Flamethrower and Snarl, we will need TMs to learn. Now, if you don't know how to get TMs, just come to any Pokemon Center. It'll be the green section, the TM machine. We're going to get TM30 Snarl first. It'll cost us 800 LP, three Mastiff Fangs, and three Squawkabilly Feathers. I'm going to show you how to get those right now. So to get the Mastiff, you want to come to the bottom of the map, go left, and fly over to South Province Area 4 Watchtower. Once you get here, just have a look around, and a Mastiff should spawn very soon. So one has spawned, it didn't take us too long, there's another behind it. So we're going to take that out, and that's how we're going to get our Mastiff Fangs. Now, Squawkabilly Feathers, we're going to come over here to get. So I want you to fly over to Artisan East. So I'll make your way over, but do keep an eye out on the way, because you might just find one. So when you get to East Province Area 1, we're going to be looking around this area. Just keeping our eye out for them Squawkabillies. So we found a pack of them right here, we're going to take them out. And that's how we're going to get our Squawkabilly Feathers. Next up is going to be TM125. It's going to be Flamethrower. This will cost us 10,000 LP, 5 Litleo Tufts, 3 Hound Hour Fangs, and 3 Numal Lavas. I'm going to show you where to get all these. So to get our Litleos, what we're going to do is we're going to fly over to South Province Area 5 Watchtower. And once we're here, we're just going to look around. And oh my, is that a shiny Litleo? That is. First Litleo we saw. That's amazing. Let's go. Uh, we love a good shiny. It's been a while since I've seen one, actually. And we got the critical capture. Let's go. Gotta love that. But yeah, that's where you find Litleos. There are shiny Litleos in this case. And then you can get your Litleo Tufts. Amazing. Well, that was a nice surprise. Next up, we're going to be coming over to the Poco Path Lighthouse to get our Hound Hour. And um, once you're at the lighthouse, we're going to be going this way to the cave where you actually was at the start of your game. So we're going to be coming in here and then just dropping down, drop down again. And around here is where we're most likely going to find it. There it is. So we're just going to take that hound hour out and we will get our hound hour fangs. There they are on screen. So next up, we need our Numal Lava. So what we're going to do is we're going to come right over here. So I'm going to uh, fly over to North Province Area 2. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the team star path from when you fought them. I'm just going to keep following this path right here. 
And when you get to the end of the path, just jump down. And it shouldn't be too long until you run into a camera up. There's a camera up and a pack of Numel. We're going to take those out. And that's how we're going to get our Numel lava. Now, before we get into some raids, I'm just going to say I, I'm using the Shell Bell. I'm not going with the Metronome route. I'm going with survivability over damage. You can choose to go damage if you'd like, but let's get into some raids. So we found our first raid. It's a five star grass type. I Dragalga, maybe? feel like that's right. We're going to roll with it. Let's begin. So our Beads of Ruin decreases its special defense by 25%. Now this thing is a special attacker, so we're going to start off the fight with Snarl. No, we're not. We missed. It's got 5% chance to miss. So we're going to try and use that again. We do hit this time, so we're going to use Snarl. This will decrease the special attack of the Dragalge by one stage. But then it's going to use Toxic, which is unfortunate. So we're going to leave it for now. And then we're going to heal after we've used one attack. So on the next turn, we're going to use nasty plot this will increase our special attack by two stages regardless she's paralyzed it can't move now i think we can get away with using a flamethrower here so we're going to use flamethrower see how much damage we can do so we do quite a bit of damage we was only on plus two and we get some health back from shell bell we go back to full health actually Dragal's is paralyzed so it can't move. It steals some of our terror charge, which is unfortunate, so we back down to zero. Now, as of right now, we're quite okay with the toxic damage we are taking, so we're just going to keep using Flamethrower. Chipping away at that shield and getting that health back. It uses Sludge Bomb again, but because of that Snarl earlier, it doesn't do too much. But then it uses Draco Meteor again straight in a row without us being able to do anything. This decreases its attack, its special attack, sorry, by a further two stages, and now we're going to heal up. Going to get rid of that poison and hopefully get a big heal so we did get a big heal i think we got about 150 health back it uses sludge bomb and it does poison us now we're going to use flamethrower again this does break the shield and heal us a bit it's going to use dragon pulse it's not removed negative effects from itself yet which is weird so there's the shield breaking we take some more damage and i'm going to terrestrialize and then just finish it off for it as a chance to nullify stuff so we terrestrialize into our fire type and then we use flamethrower which should finish it off and it does manage to finish it off and we complete the first raid i want you to let me know in the comments what build you are actually going to use if you're going to use the more aggressive build which is the metronome one or are you going to use the survivability one which is the shell bell one but with that being said let's move on to the second raid so we found our second five star raid it's a five star grass type hippodon this could be a difficult one for us but let's see how it goes so our beads of ruin activates decreasing its special defense by 50 percent right we're going to get straight into the nasty plots that special attacker i don't see the need in using snarl going to see how much damage it does to us here with its earthquake so it does just under half our bolivar's got the seed sower so we are healing a bit and instead of using another nasty plot we're going to try and get the flamethrowers off try and get this terror as quick as we can so we do do a lot of damage there and we're going to go back to full health so it did take out arcanine and arcanine comes back with another intimidate so that has helped us out massively so it's not doing like nearly as much as it was earlier. We're just going to keep it up with the flamethrowers now. Its shield has gone up. We're just going to chip away little by little. It removes negative effects from itself. So now it's attacks back to normal. And then it uses yawn. I forgot that it had yawn. It's nothing that heal can't fix if we do get put to sleep though. We're going to use another flamethrower to kind of set us up for our telestalize when we get back from the sleep. It nullifies all stat changes on our side so our special attack is back to normal now and we get put to sleep. So we're going to heal up here. Hopefully it doesn't use yawn while we're asleep. It uses rock slide this time. Does just under half to us. We get some health back because of the grassy terrain which now goes. And now we're going to use nasty plot. It did take a terror charge away from us so we can't terrestrialize like a plan to. It's using yawn. And now we're going to use flamethrower. Hopefully this gets us back to a decent amount of health that we can survive another attack. So it takes us back to full health i think almost full health it didn't use earthquake anyway so that's fine we are now asleep time to heal again use our second heal now this our uh, bolivar's uh, grassy terrain like really slows down the raid so this raid's taking a lot longer than it would have done it's using earthquake from full health that uh, does just under half and now we can finally terrestrialize and use flamethrower let's see how much damage this terrestrialized flamethrower does and it's just going to finish the hippodon off amazing even though the hippodon had its shield up and then it's going to use stockpile before it goes down for some reason and then it finally goes down so that's the second raid over with let's get on to the third raid so we found our third raid it's a five star ice tower Type Electros. Let's begin. So our Beads of Ruin activate, so the special defense of the Electros goes down by 25%. And then we're going to use Nasty Plot. 
This will increase our special attack by two stages. Electrox has used flamethrower for some reason. Uh, so we're going to use nasty plot again. This will put our special attack on plus four and then it attacks us with a crush claw. And then we use nasty plot again to put us on plus six. We're going to go for the one hit. Hopefully the shield doesn't go up before then. It uses flamethrower again. I'm not sure why it keeps using that. But then it uses thunder wave. Cheating. Use two attacks in a row. I shall not allow it. And then uses thunder wave again. Three attacks in a row. What's going on here? So we're going to use flamethrower now. Hopefully we break through we do does it kill not quite almost killed just needed a tiny bit more damage i'm guessing that one of the other pokemon will finish it off though oh no the shield's gone up the, the electros has used coil increasing its attack and defense and that but that won't matter because we're going to finish it off with a flamethrower so the electros goes down we've got plenty of time remaining the goldfish prevails and we even got herba mystica out of the four Ruin Pokemon, if you're going to build any of them, I would recommend doing a Chi Yu and a Chen Pao. I think Chen Pao's the Sabertooth looking one. If it is, then yeah, that one. Now, if you want to check out a Hisuian Zoroark build for raids in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, click on screen right now and I'll catch you on the next one.